can you see what i have can you see the shape i have it really looks like the shape of a human figure and it really comes out to well. after drafting your pattern you must have something like this the shape itself from the drafting should look like the shape of a human figure hello everyone and welcome back to my channel if this is your first time of watching my video this is reggae school of fashion in today's video i will be showing you how to make a kimono wrap jacket a kimono jacket can either be short or long it can be with open center or overlapped center which is known as wrap but in this tutorial i will be focusing on a short kimono wrap jacket with a long sleeve and belt just like the one you are seeing right now on your screen if you would like to see more of my content across different aspects of fashion designing i mean both male and female kindly subscribe to my channel so that you get notified whenever i drop a new video my name is Balaji and this is Reggae School of Fashion. In making this kimono jacket, I will be making use of this, my beautiful African print. As you can see, it is looking beautiful. So a minimum of three yards is needed in making a kimono jacket. Also, I will be making use of a plain black material to tape the neck, the sleeve and the hem line. And also, if your fabric is not thick enough, you can line your fabric with lining. But this is optional. So this pattern paper is for the front panel and I have my lines on the pattern already as you can see. This line is the starting point and this is the chest level, this is the bust level, the empire level, the waist level, the hip level and we have the jacket length and the M allowance. When I was taking measurement for the jacket length, I subtracted 2 inches which is going to be the taping for the M line. So whatever width of taping you are using, which means the fabric you are using in taping the M line, the wideness you want to use has to be subtracted from the length of the jacket. So let's assume my jacket length is 38 inches and I want to tape the M line with 2 inches. I will subtract 2 inches from 38 so i will measure 36 for my jacket length instead of 38 so by the time i'm constructing the jacket and i tape the m line with that two inches it will come back to 38 inches i will start by inserting the back measurements this will be inserted on the starting point line this is the starting point line and this is the center front so the measurement will be taken from the center front towards the side the back measurement I'm using is 16 inches, so half of 16 is what I will be inserting on the starting point line, which is 8 inches. And because it is a jacket, I will need ease of half of an inch. So instead of 8 inches, I will insert 8.5 inches. Then I will input the same measurement on the chest level, which is 8.5 inches. And I will make it a straight line. So this line is the armhole line. So this is the line I'll be using in constructing the armhole. In case you get lost or you are a beginner in fashion, you don't understand what all these lines are all about. I have a full course. It is a master class on pattern drafting in this course you will learn how to draft a basic bodice block what i have on my pattern paper is a basic bodice block this is the foundation of a basic bodice block so we learn how to draft a basic bodice block how to construct your armhole basic neckline the side the measurement how to divide your measurements and every other thing every other necessary things you are supposed to know also in this course you will learn how to draft a basic skirt pattern you will learn how to read your measuring tape the small lines you have on your measuring tape how can you read all these lines when you divide your values on your calculator you get a decimal value how can you locate this decimal value on your measuring tape 
everything is well explained in this tutorial also in this course you will learn how to take body measurement accurately this is very essential it is important to learn how to take your measurement if the measurement is not taken accurately the results of the jackets will not come out or wherever style you are making reading of your measuring tape taking of your measurement drafting your basic bodies block drafting your basic skirt pattern your sleeve pattern these are the foundations of fashion designing so they are necessary for you to learn in order to catch up with me in this tutorial and also in other content i have on my channel and the subsequent ones i will be dropping i will advise you i want to recommend this I want to recommend this course for you. It is a premium course which I sold on my website some time ago, but I decided to give it out to you, my subscribers, so that you will always catch up with me anytime I drop a new content. Also, in this course, you will learn how to use your tools. What are the necessary tools you need as a beginner or as an established fashion designer that wants to go into pattern drafting? You want to upgrade your skill from freehand to pattern drafting. You will learn to know the essential pattern drafting tools needed, the ones that are important that you can get first before getting the other ones. So you will get to know these tools and how to use them, how to position your ruler. You can see I have different curve rulers here. They are here for different purposes. They are not doing the same work. You will get to know how to use all these tools appropriately. You can see I have different curve rulers where to use this where to use this where to use this and every one of them the link to the videos all these videos are on a playlist and the link to the playlist is in the description box under this video so now i will be constructing the armhole the measurement i have from the starting point to the chest level is half of the armhole measurement so if you go through this pattern drafting course you will get to learn how to achieve all these measurements half of the armhole circumference is the chest level also after dividing the measurement i added half of an inch in order to give ease to the jacket because it is a jacket for example if my arm o measurement is 16 inches i divided it into two i have eight inches then i added half of an inch so instead of measuring eight inches i measured 8.5 inches so whatever you are using as your arm o depth measurements add half of an inch as is now i'll be constructing the front ammo the front ammo is different from the back ammo the two are not the same so i may not be going deeply into this because i already have a detailed video on how to draft a basic bodice block Now I've constructed the armhole. This is the armhole curve as you can see. So this is the armhole line. On the armhole line, I came down by one inch before constructing my armhole. So everything is well explained in how to draft a basic bodice block on the playlist of pattern drafting course. So when you watch this video, you'll get to know how I constructed the armhole. So also I'll be confirming this measurement in order to be sure of what I have for my armhole and I will compare it with my armhole circumference measurement. So I must have half of my armhole circumference measurement plus ease of half of an inch. So this is exactly what I have. So the next step is to construct the shoulder line. This is supposed to be the shoulder line, but because our shoulder is not on a straight line, we have to achieve the slopey effect we have on our shoulder. The way God constructed the shoulder, it is not on a straight line. So that is why I will be reconstructing the shoulder line and I will cross this out. You can see on the ammo line, I came down by one inch. So from this one inch point, I will connect this one inch point to the neck width measurement I'm using. So I'll be using a basic width measurement. When you watch this video on pattern drafting course, which I told you earlier, which is on my playlist, you will get to understand the difference between a basic measurement for neck and 
the average measurement you are using but because this is a jacket and i want it close is a wrap jacket we want to make this jacket in such a way there will not be need of putting on an underwear or leggings or jeans before it can be worn so it has to be closed from up to down and because of this i will be making use of a basic neck width measurement which is three inches so from these three inches points i will construct the shoulder line so these three inches points will be connected to the one inch point I have on the shoulder line, on the ample line rather. So from the one inch point on the ample line to the three inches point on the neck width. So this line is no more the shoulder line. Now back to our reference image, I will be leaving the neckline for now, I will not construct it yet until after constructing the whole of the jacket. So I will come back to construct the neckline later. The next step is to plot a dart. Plotting a dart on a jacket is optional. It depends on how you want the jacket to be. If you want to make a free jacket, a free kimono jacket, you might skip this step. It is not necessary. But if you want your jacket to be a fitted one, whereby the bust area will come out and it will not be too loose on you. So it is necessary you apply a basic dart. So please note, it has to be a basic dart. A basic dart is what we have on a basic body block. So on this pattern, I'll be plotting a basic dart. So in plotting a basic dart, you need your bust pan measurement. So this is not exactly where we are going to. It is a passage to making a wrap kimono jacket. If you want to know detailing about how to do all this, that is why I'm recommending my videos on pattern drafting course. So the link to the playlist is available on the, in the description box under this video. So now I'm plotting a basic dart. Okay. So if you don't want to apply a waist dart, you can as well apply a side dart. But make sure it is not more than one inch. Your dart intake should not be more than one inch because it is a jacket. Now I will be extending my darts to the hip level. So I will take the measurement I have from the center front to the middle of my darts, which is this point, and I will be inserting the same value on the hip level. And I will connect the two points together with my straight ruler. Okay, so then from the hip level, I will come up by two inches. And I'll be connecting from the two inches point to the point I have on the waistline. Okay, so the next step is to extend my dart to the shoulder line and downward to the jacket length, which is the hemline. I will be inserting the same value I have on the hip level on the jacket length as well. Okay, 
I will not extend my dart to the shoulder line yet. It will be after constructing the side of the jacket. In constructing the side of the jacket, I will be inserting the horizontal measurement I have for the vertical measurement. So, what I have for the bust level has been inserted on the chest level. So, I don't need to insert any measurements on the bust level anymore. Also, I will be needing measurements for the empire level. Also, I will be needing circumference measurement for the empire level, for the waist level, and for the hip level. If you are making a free jacket, you don't want your jacket to be a fitted one. Please keep this measurement. You don't need it, the empire level measurement. But if you want your jacket to be a fitted one, whereby you want your bust area to come out to, to, to be fitted, so you can use this measurement. So I'm skipping the bust level because I already inserted it on the chest level. And I will insert quarter of the empire level circumference. Empire is the same thing as the under the bust measurement. So quarter of the empire circumference measurement I'm using is 8 inches. So this is the point. Then because my dart passes through the empire line, I will have to take the measurement of the dart intake I have here. I have half of an inch so i'll be returning this bag and i will cross this house after inserting the empire circumference measurement i will insert the waist circumference measurement the waist circumference measurement i'm using is 34 34 divided by 4 i have 8.5 inches plus one inch that allowance this is the 8.5 inches point and because i have a dart intake of one inch which i have to return back to the side so that is one inch point after which i will add extra half of an inch as his i'm adding up to half of an inch because it is a jacket it has to be free a little not too tight but if you want to make a free jacket intentionally as i've been saying it from the beginning of this tutorial you have to add more than half of an inch as your his. You can add from one inch to two inches. You can add one inch, 1.5 inches, up to two inches and more. If you want to make it wide or you are making it for the purpose of maternity gown. But if you want to make it as a fitted jacket, half of an inch is enough to be a his. Now I'll be inserting quarter of the hip circumference measurements on the hip level. Quarter of the hip circumference measurement I'm using is 10.5. And as, I've, as I said earlier, I need ease of half of an inch to make it 11 inches. So I will cross this out. So the measurement I have on the hip level is what I will be inserting on the jacket length. So on the jacket length, I will be inserting the value I have on the hip level, which is 11 inches. And I will add extra 1 inch to make it 12 inches because I want the M line to flare. Please note, I inserted this measurement on the jacket length, not on the hem allowance. After inserting the horizontal measurement, the next step is to connect the points together in order to construct the side of the pattern. So I will start with the chest level. So this is the point I have on the chest level. This will be connected to the point I have on the empire level, which I will be making use of my very firm curve ruler. So then I'll be connecting from the empire level point to the waist point. I'm using the same very firm curve ruler. Okay, so the next step is to connect from the waist point to the hip point. Please take note, whatever style you are making, connection from waist to hip requires the hip curve ruler. You don't do this with a straight ruler because our side from waist to the hip is not on a straight line. So we have to achieve the curvy effect we have by the side from waist to hip. You can see the shape of the ruler itself. It looks like the hip of a human figure. So that is why I'll be making use of this hip curve ruler in order to achieve the curve. Okay. So connection from the hip level to the desired either skirt length, dress length, jacket length, or whatever length you are using requires 
a straight through line. So in the pattern drafting course I was talking about earlier, you will learn to know how to position your curve ruler. You can see the way I position my very firm curve is different from the way I position the hip curve ruler. So when you are constructing your pattern, the way you, you position your ruler are different from each other. So that is why I'm recommending this course for you to learn how to use your tools. So now I'll be connecting from the hip level to the jacket length. Can you see what I have? Can you see the shape I have? It really looks like the shape of a human figure and it really comes out well. After drafting your pattern, you must have something like this. The shape itself from the drafting should look like the shape of a human figure. So guys, we are now at the most important part of the tutorial while we are here, which is the construction of the center front. In constructing the center front, it all depends on you. It depends on how much you want the center front to overlap or how much you want the center front to open. As I said in the intro, that the center front of a kimono jacket can either be opened or overlap. This all depends on you. But in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the overlapping parts of the center front. So which means I'll be constructing this pattern in such a way the jacket will overlap at the center front, which we call a wrap jacket. And because of this, I will be maintaining the three inches point I have here as the neck width. But if you want the center front opened, you don't want it to overlap, you will have to add to the neck width measurement you are using. You can use 3.5 or 4 inches, 5 inches. The more value you had, the more opened the center front. Also, if you want the center front to be very close, you want it to be a high neck, you can reduce the measurements I used here. I used 3 inches. You can reduce it to 2.5 inches or 2 inches. But I will be maintaining 3 inches for the purpose of this tutorial. This 3 inches is a basic neck measurement. Because I want the center front to be very close, I don't want it open at all. That is number one. And I want the meeting point to be by the side. You know, after opening the center, by the time I will cut this out now, the center front will not be closed, it will be open. The two sides will stand separately. Now they must have a meeting point where the two sides will meet. So the sides can either meet at the center or by the side. So if you want your center front to meet at the center, so which means you will have to subtract whatever you subtracted from the neck width is what we subtract from the m line but if we want it to come to one side what you'll be subtracting from the m line will be smaller than what you subtracted on the neck width but as for me i will be connecting this point straight down to the edge of the jacket length so which means i'm not subtracting any value from the jacket length so my connection will be from this three inches point on the neck width downward to the jacket length at this edge which is the center front okay but if you don't want the m line to be closed completely you can subtract from half of an inch to three inches which you have on the neck width if i want to subtract half of half of an inch i'll mark the points then position my ruler from the three inches point to the half of an inch point, then I will connect it straight down with a straight ruler. If I want to use more than that, all I need to do is just measure the value if it is one inch or 1.5 or two inches or three inches. But whatever value you are subtracting determines how open the M line will be. If you don't want the M line to open at all, you can just connect to the hedge. So the connection I'm having here will complement the flare I'm having by the side. If you notice when I was taking this measurement, I added extra one inch in order to give room for movement when I put on the jacket or on the wearer. So if you are not adding this, so please put it in mind that you have to give a room for movement. So your connection should not be to the hedge. You should measure at least one inch from this center backward to connect the two points together so 
So can you see what I have? So this is what I will be having for my center front. If you want to, if you don't want your center front to be as open as this on the neck area, as I said earlier, you can as well reduce it. You can reduce it by half of an inch or by one inch. So now I can work on the dart. In order to extend my dart to the shoulder line, I will be dividing what I have on the shoulder line into two. So I will mark the midpoint. So this is 5.5. Half of 5.5 is 2.75. So which is this point? Then I will be connecting this straight down to the boss point. Okay. Can you see we are almost done and the pattern is almost ready. The only thing I need to do which is optional is to add my seam allowances. If you notice from the beginning of this drafting to the end, I did not add my seam allowance because it is a pattern. If you know you will be needing your pattern for future reference or for future purpose, you can just keep it like so and add all your seam allowances on the fabric. But if you know you are making use of a fabric whereby the chalk can stain it easily, you can as well add your seam allowance on the pattern. Now I will be adding my seam allowances all around the pattern and I will be showing you the places, the important places you need to add your seam allowance. Firstly, the seam allowance is needed on the shoulder line. Half of an inch is needed on the shoulder line to join the front shoulder and the back shoulder together. Also, I will be needing half of an inch to finish the edges of the front panel because this is no more this is not going to be unfold anymore after cutting this out i will be having the two sides of the center front in pieces in order to finish the edges i need half of an inch i will have added half of an inch directly on my pattern but because the connection if is from this three inches point to the tip of the jacket length which i do not have any space by the side anymore for this reason i will not add the same allowance i will be adding it on the fabric also, this dart will be cut out. After cutting out the darts, I need half of an inch to join them together. So which means I will have this as a piece and I will have this side also as a piece. By this side, I will add half of an inch. By this side, I will add half of an inch. Also, on the armhole, I will be needing half of an inch to attach the sleeve to the armhole. Please, seam allowance is very important in clothing construction. If you don't add your seam allowance, you have already reduced all the measurements you inserted on your pattern. After that, on the chest level, I will be adding my seam allowance of one inch. On the empire level, one inch. On the waist level, one inch. On the hip level, one inch. On the jacket length, one inch. All together are called the side seam. So which means by the side of my pattern, I needed one inch all through to the M line. So guys, as you can see, I've added all the necessary seam allowances of the camera, except the one I will be needing at the center front after cutting this out and the one I will be using in joining the dart point together, which I will be adding on the fabric. So after cutting this out, I will be replacing the three inches I will be cutting out here with this plain material. As you can see, so I will be using this, I will be replacing this bag with this plain material. So this is what will help the jacket to overlap. So now I'm ready to cut out the pattern and I will start with the M line. So this is the jacket length. I'm cutting on the M allowance. So don't forget to add your hem allowance. The amount you'll be adding as your hem allowance has to do with how you want to finish the M line. If you are finishing the M line with lining, all you need is half of an inch. If you are not finishing the M line with lining, you need up to two inches. If you want to attach a taping to the M line, you will need up to half of an inch as well. So after cutting out the M line, I will be folding in the hem allowance. Okay, so this is the hem line. This is the jacket length. So I'll be folding this on the jacket length so that I will not have a shortage when I'm constructing my jacket.
So I'm folding in the M allowance so that I will not have a shortage when constructing the jacket. So I can cut on the line like so or position my ruler and make sure I have a little slant line. So can you see what I have? So either of the two will work perfectly. So now I'm cutting on the shoulder line. Okay. The arm O. Then I can cut out the center front. So this is what I have for the front jacket pattern as you can see. I still have my darts on the jacket so I will be separating these in order to cut out the dart. So that was why I have a straight line from the apex point to the mid shoulder. So now I'm cutting out the dart. So this will help the bust area to come out or the shape of the bust will come out well. If you don't want the bust area to come out well, skip the dart step. So this is the dart and I will continue cutting on the straight line to the hemline of the jacket. This is what I have for the front panel of the jacket, as you can see. This is the side I cut out the dart. The one I was explaining earlier, which I said I will be needing half of an inch in joining the two pieces together. I will be adding half of an inch on this side downward. Also, on this piece as well, I will add half of an inch, which I will be doing on the fabric when I'm ready to cut out the pattern. Now I'll be drafting the back panel of the jacket. There's not much to do on the back because we are not opening the back. The center back is going to be on fold. So I have all the vertical lines drawn already on my pattern paper off the camera. This is the starting point. This is the chest level. On the back panel, I don't need the bust level. That is why I don't have the line on the pattern. So this is the empire level. This is the waist level, the hip level the jacket length and the hem allowance. So I will be constructing the neckline. On the starting point, I will insert the width measurement I use for the front bodies, which is three inches. So this is the point. So for the depth, I will use one inch. You can use between one inch and 1.5 inches. So this, is, this has to do with how low you want the back to be. But because of the style, I'll be using one inch as the depth.
So from the neck depth at the center front, I will come in by one and a half inches. Then I'll be constructing the neckline like so. Okay. So the next step is to insert half of the back measurement. So this has to be the same thing with the measurement I use for the front. So I use 8.5 inches. I used 8.5 inches for the back with ease of half of an inch. So on the chest level, I'll be inserting the same measurement. So with this, I can construct the armhole line. Okay, here I have the armhole line. On the armhole line, I will come down by one inch in order to construct the shoulder slope. So after constructing the shoulder slope, then I will construct the arm hole. And because the back arm hole will not be as deep as the front arm hole, I'll be reducing the measurement I used on this line. So when you watch my pattern drafting course videos, you will get to understand why I reduced this measurement. Also, you will know the value I used here and the value I used for the front bodies. So on the chest level, I will insert quarter of the bust width ease of half of an inch. So with this, I can construct the back arm hole. Okay, so the next step is to plot the dart. So this is not the waist level, this is just like a passage to the construction boss of the jacket. So that is why I will not so be staying the way I did when I was on drafting. This, I already the make a provision. Panel. There is the difference pattern between the front I was talking dart about and the back dart. Where I explain into details how you can plot your dart. So now I'll be extending the dart downward to the jacket length and also to the mid shoulder. Now I'll be extending the dart to the mid shoulder. Okay. So the next step is to insert the horizontal measurement. I'll be inserting the empire circumference measurement, the waist circumference, the hip circumference, and the measurement that will be on the jacket length. I already have the bust measurements on the chest level. So I'll come to the empire level and insert quarter of the empire level, which is eight inches. Then the dart intake I have on the empire level will be returned back Okay. Then I will cross this out. Then on the waist level, I will insert quarter of the waist level. So which is 8.5 plus that intake of one inch. 
then I'll add ease of half of an inch. So this is the point I'm using and I'll cross these two points. Okay, then on the hip level, I'm inserting quarter of the hip circumference measurement plus ease of half of an inch, which makes it 11 inches, like so. So the measurement I have on the hip level is what I'll be inserting on the jacket length plus extra one inch. I have 11 inches on the hip level, so on the jacket length, I'll be inserting 12 inches. So the next step is to connect the points together. I will be needing my straight ruler, I will be needing my very firm curve and the hip curve ruler. I will be connecting from the chest point to the empire level just the way I did when I was drafting the front. So with the same ruler, I will be connecting from the empire point to the waist point. Okay, from the waist point to the hip, I will be making use of the hip curve. So when you are constructing the front, make sure you take note of the number you used so that you will use the same thing when you are drafting the back. The two has to be equal. Then from the hip level to the jacket length will be a straight line. And I will extend this line to the M line slantly. It's not going down straight. The next step is to add the seam allowances all around the pattern. As I'll be doing this off the camera just the way I did when I was drafting the front, I'll be needing a seam allowance of half of an inch on the neckline, half of an inch on the shoulder line, half of an inch on the armhole, one inch by the sides from the chest level downward to the jacket length. Also, after separating the pattern, wherever I will cut out the dots, I will be needing half of an inch on both sides to join the pieces together. But as for the center back, the center back will be on fold, so I'm not adding any seam allowance on the center back. So I'll be doing this off the camera. So guys, the back pattern is ready. I've added the seam allowances, as you can see, on the neckline, the shoulder line, the armhole, and by the side. So now I'm done cutting out the pattern. So this is a dart line. When I'm ready to cut out the fabric, I will be adding a seam allowance of half of an inch on both sides, which I'll be using in joining the two together. Now we are at the last phase of this tutorial, which is the sleeve part. This is a basic sleeve pattern. Every drafting you are seeing on this pattern is from the beginning to the end is a basic sleeve pattern. So if you know how to draft a basic sleeve pattern, just go through the process of drafting a basic sleeve pattern, but I'll be telling you the measurement I used on the opening of the sleeve. This is the sleeve head, this is the front part, and this is the back part. If you don't know how to draft a basic sleeve pattern, or you are not sure of how you have been doing it, there is no cause for alarm. I have a provision for you already. So this tutorial, the tutorial of a basic sleeve pattern, is part of the pattern drafting course I've been saying since the beginning of this tutorial. The videos are on a playlist and the link to the playlist is in the description box under this video. From the sleeve head downward to the M line is the process of a basic sleeve pattern. So on the M line, I used 18 inches. So measurement from this Measurement from this point to this point is the M line, so which I used 18. So this is the length of my sleeve. From the sleeve head to this point is the length of my sleeve. So this can be your desired sleeve length. You can decide to make it a short sleeve, three quarter or long sleeve. The measurement I have here is for three quarter length. If you want it longer, you can take the measurement to the wrist. Or if you want it shorter, you can reduce the length measurement so and i divided the measurement into two i measured nine inches on the front side of the sleeve and nine inches on the back side of the sleeve so
so this 18 inches is like a standard measurement so this is 18 so can you see what i have so which means the sleeve will be as wide as this after construction at the same time you can reduce this measurement if you don't want it too wide can you see this is 16 this is 18 some can even go as much as 20 inches so that is the beauty of the jacket is the sleeve part of the jacket so that is just the secret so can you see so whatever you are using it has to be divided by two half of it for the front side and half of it for the back side so i will be cutting out the pattern and also as you can see i have my seam allowances all around the pattern by the side of the back i have one inch downward by the side of the front i have one inch downward on the m line i have half of an inch i added half of an inch as m allowance because i will be attaching a taping on the m line and the height of the taping is two inches so i subtracted two inches from the sleeve length measurement if you don't want to add taping to your m line to the m line of your sleeve so which means just take the measurement the way it is so whatever measurement you'll be using you have to subtract the taping height from it then on the sleeve head i had a half of an inch all around following the shape of the sleeve head. you can see the shape i have for the sleeve head it is a constructive shape so can you see i constructed this shape with my curve ruler and i use some measurement to achieve the curve it is not a freehand whereby you just take your pencil or your chalk and just draw whatever you can draw out so after this curve then i measured half of an inch upward following the shape i have on the sleeve head so this is the same allowance i will be using in attaching the sleeve to the bodies So guys, this is where I will be putting a stop to this tutorial for now. Join me in the second part of this video where I will be showing you how to cut out the jacket pattern on fabric, how to construct the pieces together to make a beautiful wrap jacket with sleeve and belt. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't so that you won't miss out when I drop this valuable content. Till I come your way again, always do remember. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. <laughs>